training that I want to give to parents is actually creating a context for their child's violin study that is giving them a really big world for them to step into. Because when you see a young child playing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, say a five-year-old, that's pretty awesome. When you see a five-year-old playing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star with vibrato and expressive movement, that's more awesome. So you really want your parents to know what is on the menu so that they can have a, the biggest possible picture for where they want to weigh in on that spectrum. So some parents are going to really try to hit that peak. They're very motivated, their child is very motivated, they're willing to put in that hard work. Some parents, you know, for whatever reason, they're very involved in sports or they're just more chill. They're gonna, you know, hit a lower point on that spectrum, and that's fine. But I do want them to, I want to let them know what's on the menu so that they really have all those options and that they can start pulling that toward themselves. Because if the only thing that they're getting week to week to week is that violin lesson, that's not really creating a big enough context for the violin study. I want them to be getting other inputs. I want them to be going to other concerts. I want them to be specifically seeing performances of young people. Check out this video of Juilliard pre-college. You know, here's what's happening in New York. I'm not in New York, you know, so I don't have that culture around me and they don't have that culture around them. But I can start to create those linkages so that they're getting a taste of that and that inspires them. And that's going to start to inspire their child. Now, at the beginning, that may be coming mostly from the parent, that inspiration, that sense of vision, that drive to work hard might be coming more from the parent. But very early on, that child is going to start to see the results of their effort. They're going to look at, the, at their peers around them who may, or, who may not be putting in that hard work, and they're going to go, wow, I'm glad that I'm not that person who's still playing hot cross buns after two years. I'm really glad that I'm working hard, and do I sometimes miss playing with my friends? Yes, and I'm okay with that because I'm really proud of my accomplishments. One of the key insights of Shinichi Suzuki was that parents are a really incredible asset for a young child in learning the violin. There is no way that a young child is gonna be able to do this without that parent really serving as the home teacher. So the role of the teacher in the Suzuki method is to really teach the parent to work with the child. Part of what we do in the lessons is working directly with the child, but a lot of what we do is really training the parent because the child may not master that skill during the lesson. They're gonna go home, they're gonna work with mom, and maybe you know Thursday they figure out how to do what you were trying to get them to do in lesson. So, Part of the Suzuki curriculum includes a component of parent training before lessons even start. And for a lot of Suzuki teachers, that parent training may be six weeks, eight weeks, 10 weeks. It's pretty long. The parent is going to learn how to play all of those songs on the violin from the very beginning. We're gonna talk about the child's temperament. We're gonna talk about working with the child, a lot of things. And that's amazing. If you have that amount of time with the parent, you're gonna have a child who's really well set up. For me, I've found that I don't necessarily need that many sessions with the parent. I do like to have at least uh, two or three sessions one-on-one -on -one with the parent before their child ever walks into the room. And if you think about it, that parent really needs to get through some of their discomfort about learning to play the violin before they're kind of on the spot for being the teacher. So. During those initial lessons, I'm going to talk some about the relationship aspects of being the home teacher and I'm also going to make sure that they get on the violin, they learn how to make a bow hold, they learn how to flex their fingers on the bow, they play a couple of songs. Now because the songs are more gently paced than in the Suzuki repertoire, I don't need them to go through a whole lot of the songs. They're going to learn it alongside their child and as long as they have a couple of songs under their belt, they're going to be a fine teacher at home. Here's what I do want to talk about with the parent during those first couple of lessons before the child ever shows up. First of all, I want to talk with them about having their materials ready to go. 
People walk into the lesson experience at lots of levels of organization. There's the super organized parent who, you know, is way more organized than I am, and then there's the really disorganized parent that I really have to sit on top of and make sure that they have their binder, they have the tabs, they have their notebook, they have their pen ready to go. <clears throat> I'm, I'm going to lay out for them all of the expectations that I have so that they're walking into that lesson organized. And I want them to have a sensation that they're accountable to me. And I'm not afraid to really set myself up as the authority figure with the parent. Now, as a young teacher, that's really tricky because the parents in general are going to be about 10 years older than you. And that's okay. You have a music degree. You have a lot of background playing violin. You know the instrument. You know what it takes to master the instrument. You know how much practice it's going to take and you know what they're going to have to do at home, at least to a point. So don't be intimidated by that parent who looks like, you know, they have way more life experience than you. They might have a lot of life experience, they don't have this life experience. So it's fine for you to really set yourself up as the authority figure and set your expectations and don't be afraid to you know, even talk with them about what's necessary as a teacher because unless they're an elementary school teacher, they don't necessarily know how to handle that aspect of the relationship. So you can talk to them about here are the ways that you're going to interact with your child. Here are some basic, you know, foundational ideas of pedagogy, um, you know, is interactive, um, how to create a dialogue with your child so that you're not, you know, telling the child what to do, but they're generating it for themselves. Some of those real big picture ideas you can share with them because it takes a long time to learn how to be a teacher and they haven't had that relationship with their child. Being a parent and, you know, teaching your child how to walk and, <clears throat> you know, having fun and hanging out with your child is very different from sitting down and learning how to play violin. You know how to do that so you can transmit that information to them and they'll really appreciate having that coming from you. I talk about the materials that I want them to get, and one of those materials in the kaleidoscope system is a piano. Um, I realize that you know these parents don't have infinite resource. For some families, purchasing you know say a, a high quality keyboard is totally not a big deal financially. For other uh, for other parents, that is a little bit of a burden. So I talk to them about you know here's here's how to think about making that decision. You know it is a long term investment, so getting a nicer keyboard is a wonderful thing to have. Weighted keys are really important. So if you can get a keyboard that has weighted keys. If you can't, that's fine. Just get a, you know, whatever keyboard you want to get, you know, the, the $60 Walmart keyboard, that's okay. Um, <clears throat> if you do get a nicer keyboard, that's something that we're going to use, the child's going to really appreciate because we're going to keep coming back to that piano training as they continue through their violin lessons. When we get into book two, we're going to do melody and chords and the child is going to be doing right hand melody and left hand chords. Um, you know, during book two, we'll have like a little sort of piano unit. So if you do make that investment, that's something that's really going to pay off. The child's going to enjoy exploring that extra instrument as well, even if it's not a um, sort of structured part of the violin lessons. I talk with them also about sending a practice journal every week. Now, some parents are really good at staying on top of that. Some parents, you have to sort of bug them. Uh, if I have a parent who's starting out, I do put a reminder in my own calendar that if I haven't gotten that practice journal, emailed to me by 8 p.m. the night before, I send them a reminder to send that to me because I want them to know that I take that really seriously. And the practice journal communicates a couple of things. It communicates to them that I expect them to really take responsibility for the volume of work that happens with their child during the week. It's not their child's responsibility to practice. At this point in their study, that sense of discipline and that daily routine really belongs to the parent and the person who's accountable for, to me for creating that is the parent. So when they send that practice journal, that's part of them actually 
you know, kind of being accountable for whatever it was that happened or didn't happen during the week. Another uh, benefit of having them send me a practice journal is I get to really hear how it's going for them. It's a really op a good opportunity for them to share, you know, sort of the good, the bad, and the ugly of the practice. And I let them know, I want, you know, it's great if they tell me kind of the activities that they did. That's fine. But really what I want to know is how did it go? You know, did the child have meltdowns? Did the child love every minute and like wake them up at six in the morning, you know, wanting to practice, which I got from one parent. Um, it's a wonderful problem to have when the child wakes you up at six in the morning and, and wants to practice violin. I want to know the highlights and the lowlights of the violin practice. And then the last thing that the practice journal does is it really opens that line of communication between me and the parent. So they have a habit of sharing with me, you know, what's going well for, the, for them. And that makes it more likely that if they do start to run into choppy waters, that I'm going to hear about that way earlier than I would uh, if they weren't, if there wasn't some kind of structure where they're in frequent communication to me. Because just as much as the child comes to lesson and wants to look good, the parent actually wants to come to lesson and look good. And if there's a problem that's happening in the home practice, a lot of times they'll really kind of keep that to themselves. They want to kind of work it out on their own. They don't want to bother me with it. But of course, you know, every teacher would prefer that the parent come to them and bother me sooner so that I can maybe offer a suggestion or give them guidance or at least know what's going on. Um, a lot of times, you know, I can say something to the child, like if the child is uh, not doing a good job of being receptive to posture corrections, I can put a conversation into the violin lesson and say, you know, by the way, your mom is my assistant and when you go home, she's doing what I tell her to do. So this week, when she corrects your posture, here's what I want you to do. I want you to say thank you. And I can put that into a violin lesson, and because the child sees me as the authority figure, they will then go home and be more willing to accept that feedback from mom, even when they would otherwise tend to resist mom because she's just mom. So if I have that open line of communication, it really helps me stay more closely in touch with what's going on at home, and that gives me the ability to be a much better teacher. Something that I like to talk about with parents at the, during those initial lessons is the big myth that a lot of parents walk into violin lessons with, and it goes something like this. If my child loves music, they will want to practice, and I don't want to make them practice because I'm afraid that they will grow up and hate me. So it makes sense, and it's totally... Uh, a misconception of the nature of young kids. I have never met a child that did not love music, and I have rarely met a child that loves to practice, at least the pure form of practicing. Because really what practicing is, is hard work. And hard work is something that children are not naturally disposed to enjoy. Now there are some children who do, that's awesome, but most children are really very pleasure-seeking beings, and children are designed to be pleasure-seeking beings. So if you want your child to grow up with the ability to work hard and some kind of stamina and some kind of discipline, that's going to be built in very small steps and it's going to be built by having the experience of working hard. So as you're talking, you know, as the parent, as you're talking with your child about practicing, you want to frame it as this is work and this is the work that you do. You know, I as the parent have my work, you know, daddy has 
his work and you have your work. And we make it as fun as we can, but there's not an expectation that practicing is supposed to be fun. Because you know, practicing is sometimes fun and it's sometimes really boring. And it's sometimes really tough. Like when your arm is getting tired because you've been holding that violin up for a while, it's hard work and it's taxing and it's strenuous and it's, it's emotionally hard for them to you know, feel that, those pains in their body. And that's okay. So I communicate to parents that I, I, I want to let them know this is the misconception and this is the value that I want you to transmit to your child.